Let's imagine a scenario, real quick. It's late at night and you've been playing your favorite fighting game all day. Normally you're generally pretty good, however, something about your play today is... off. Every mix-up you do is predictable, every approach option you take is stuffed, and despite playing the game for a long time, feels like you've never actually learned to block. It's over for you. You're washed. At least, that's how it feels. Taking L's in any competitive field can make you feel like crap. There's a large history of people losing in sports, esports, and even professional fields, and this leading to them falling into a slump, or even a depression, depending on how bad the losses can be. You probably know a bunch of people who take losses pretty hard, be it in real life, or just a dude on the internet who yells at video games a little bit too much. And if you're that kind of person, then this video is for you. It's also the video for you if you're not that kind of person. It's also the video for you if you don't even play fighting games. It's also the video for you if you don't even play video games at all. This video is rated E for everyone because the ESRB didn't notice how much I say the word fuck. Because I have some news that may change your entire worldview on competitive video games. Getting your ass handed to you on a silver platter is actually good for you. Oh, well, it can be. There's a lot of new people entering the fighting game community, with Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 coming out, along with other projects looming overhead. So with a lot of new players, there's a lot of people getting their asses kicked, and it probably feels like crap. In fact, I can guarantee you that it feels like crap. I know that it feels like crap. This video is as much for you as it is for me. I can't keep doing this, dude. I suck. This game sucks. I suck at this sucky video game. I'm never going to get good. I'm going to suck for the rest of my life. There's no point. Oh my god, what shut up! For anyone struggling with anything competitive or just struggling with anything in general, let's talk about why losing is good for you. In most competitive games, half of the players entering the match are going to come out as winners, and the other half are going to come out as losers. And since humans are designed to never reflect inwards, they will simply find something they had no control over and blame that instead. Bad teammates, terrible loot rolls, bad RNG, all of these things are common excuses for people to blame instead of themselves for a loss. Now, you would think in fighting games that people would be less likely to do this, as the games are one-on-one -on -one with virtually zero luck factor, but trust me, players still find a way to pin their losses on anything other than themselves. Your character is bullshit. This matchup sucks. You're just mashing. A stray photon hit my machine, and that's why Ken did random heavy dragon lash, and that's why you counted it. It definitely wasn't me doing that input. Stuff like this is extremely common to hear in every fighting game from someone who just lost. But for these people, I have terrible, terrible news for you. The reason you lost is because you fucked up. You did something wrong which led to you losing. Maybe it was one major misplay, maybe it was a lot of smaller ones, but the likelihood is that you did something incorrect and that led to your downfall. In fact, even in the matches where you won, you probably did several things wrong, but you either weren't punished for them because your enemy didn't notice, or you got lucky and they also messed up. In fact, in every match of every game ever played, there are moments where someone makes a mistake and it causes their opponent to punish them, leading to them getting an advantage or possibly even a victory off of it. I would happily bet that there has never been a single competitive game of anything ever where both human players have not made a single mistake. At some point, we're gonna mess up in some way, and that's fine, but why does this make losses good for us? Well, losses allow us to easily see these mistakes, examine them, and try to figure out why they happened. Smart people learn from the mistakes they made in the past and attempt to not make the same mistakes again. So every loss should be a learning opportunity for you. Now, some losses are gonna be easy to figure out why you lost. For example, why did the player lose in this clip? If you said it's because they EXDP'd randomly on their block, then you'd be correct and you're officially smarter than all Ken players, including me. Congratulations, you should run this channel now. It's all in your hands. But not every option is going to be as obvious as don't fucking EXDP there. For example, are you aware of the concept of the shimmy? A shimmy is a technique where you walk towards your opponent like you're going to throw them, but then you walk backwards out of their throw range. So they go to tech the throw, but they just throw the air, meaning that you get a nice counter hit combo on them. It's a very common tactic in some fighting games, meaning that you're going to see it on offense a lot and you have to figure out how to deal with it. But if this is your first time seeing it, then you're probably gonna bite and get counter hit for it. In the 
moment, you might not have seen what happened, but after it happens, you'll have some time to calm down, maybe get a nice drink, rest up a little bit, and then you can go back and watch yourself getting your shit stomped in. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever watched a replay of your own match, however, you're definitely not prepared to see how you play, because the first time you watch the replay of one of your matches after a while, the only thing that will come to your head is, oh my god, I am terrible at this game. I'm not sure what it is, but in the heat of the moment while you're playing a game, you're less likely to notice all these stupid things you're doing compared to when you look back at what happened in a replay. And if you're losing, then you're definitely doing something majorly wrong. And when you do lose, you have the added benefit of being able to take your opponent's strategy and possibly use it against someone else in a match. The moment somebody uses a piece of tech, it's no longer just theirs. Fighting games are a collaborative effort in which the strategy and resources that you use to get better are shared by the collective. Through hardships, we can all get stronger, not just as individuals, but as a collective unit. We can overthrow the top tiers and replace this oppressive system with one where all tiers can be played competitively. No one is stronger than another due to birthright or unfair balance patches. We can overthrow the ruling class and finally be truly equal. So to quickly recap what we've been over so far, in anything you're going to make mistakes, even if you don't see them immediately. So it's important to go back and review your matches. While you do that, why don't you steal, I mean, borrow, the tech that your opponent used to beat you to improve your own game plan. And that's why losing is good for you. But there's one problem with all of this. It's all well and good saying that losing is good for you, but that still doesn't make it fun. In fact, having someone simply tell you that losing constantly is good for you can actually be more tilting. You're not the one who's getting their shit stopped in repeatedly. You don't know how it feels to go on a 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 loss streak. It's easy for you to say because you win all of the time. This is probably what you're thinking, but the truth of the matter is that everyone has been through this process at some point. Sometimes we've even been through it multiple times, and we might end up going through it again. But high tier players, or even people who have just been playing fighting games for a while, know that. The main thing I've learned from getting my ass kicked in fighting games, though, is that it gets very, very tilting very quickly. And when you're tilted, you're more likely to make mistakes. And the more likely you are to make mistakes, the more losses you'll take. It becomes this self-perpetuating cycle where you keep losing and getting tilted, so you lose more, so you get more tilted, until eventually you find yourself breaking your peripherals and swearing to never play the game again. So if you want to have your losses actually help you, it's probably best to find a way to deal with the tilt that you're feeling, isn't it? The first way to deal with tilt is to try and center yourself and connect with the zen part of your soul. And if that doesn't work, you can always break a keyboard. In all seriousness, though, there's two ways to deal with tilt. There are preemptive measures to stop it from happening, and there are actions you can take once the tilt is set in. I will say that generally, this isn't a foolproof guide on how to deal with these things. Everyone has different ways to deal with their emotions, and while some of them will help, others might not be as effective. So take these with a grain of salt, and don't be afraid to experiment. To begin with, I would say try to disconnect yourself from anything that would make it personal. This is mainly for ranked modes, but it also applies for tournaments and even friendly sets against your rivals. It is good to try and track your progress and see how much you're getting better, but it's been proven several times that progress isn't linear. And improving at things generally means that you'll find periods where you seemingly perform worse than you were performing before. This isn't just normal, it's part of the process. It doesn't feel good, but it's something that has to happen. And disconnecting yourself from your rank or from your rival's grudge will really help you on this. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible. Your rank doesn't represent your actual skill. It's a way for the matchmaking system to put you against other players, not how good you potentially are. This may sound weird, but in fighting games, there's a lot of things to do that help you improve instead of playing ranked. In fact, most pro players don't even play ranked that much. Going to offline locals and fighting strong players in casual matches, or even just competing in tournaments, will always be way better for you to find out how strong you potentially are. The more that you do these things, the stronger you'll get. And since they don't have any rating directly attached to them, you're less likely to get tilted. Not to mention it's just way less tilting actually being able to talk to the guy who's kicking your ass. Do this enough, and the hope is that you'll get good enough that you'll fly through the ranks next time you try them. Ranked matchmaking should be a way for you to test out strategies against other players of similar skill level and see how they work. It's not a competition, it's a training ground. And this one may sound the stupidest, but get it into your head that when something doesn't go your way, it doesn't actually matter. I think an example would help with this one. When I was first learning Guilty Gear Drive, I was constantly getting hit with DPs on Wake Up because I didn't know how to safe jump, and it would really piss me off. 
I was really annoyed that I would have to give up my pressure on Oki because there was a chance that my opponent would reversal. It was easily the thing that got me the most tilted and I didn't know what to do until I watched the Brian F video and I saw that every time he got hit with a wake up DP, he would say out loud, that's fine. It confused me a little bit, but I decided that he must be onto something, so I started doing this in my games. Every time I would get hit with a DP, be it on wake up or in a string, I would force myself to say out loud, that's fine. Eventually, I didn't have to say it out loud. I would just say it in my head, and eventually, I started to believe it. Even to this day, when I get hit with a DP, I will think, that's fine, and keep going. It works, and it reduces tilt. You should try it sometime. But eventually, you're gonna get tilted no matter what happens. Maybe you played for too long and things got to you, or you had to deal with an Arakune. Who knows? But the tilt will have gotten to you somehow. Now what do you do? Well, the main one that I find that works is TAKE A FUCKING BREAK! Do literally anything else. Go play Team Fortress, or Neon White, or Ultra Kill, or Neko Para. Maybe don't play that last one, actually. Taking yourself away from the game for a bit will make you feel better. It's up to you to figure out how long you need to take away from a game. Some people only need a couple of minutes, some may need a few hours, and if it's really bad, some people will say they will never come back until they quietly reinstall the game three hours later. I recommend doing something that makes you feel good, and if the game stops being fun, maybe stop playing for a bit or try to find the fun again. Don't force yourself to do something that you don't like doing. Playing games with friends generally helps me with this, especially when it comes to improving. If you play a fighting game with an actual group of people that you know, it's a lot less tilting when you lose, and generally because you're doing rotations, you don't have to play for as long, so you have a bit of time to cool down between matches. Also, just go to tournaments. Tournaments are cool, they help you with your mental, and once you lose twice, you're out. You don't go on a 50 losing streak. And then you can go and find people who also play the game around your skill level. Very nice. Very fun. Go to your locals. Fighting games are great, but you're going to be losing a lot in them, especially when you start out. It's on you to take these losses in stride and learn to improve from them. Mastery of anything involves countless failures and learning from said failures. But if it becomes too much, make sure to look after yourself. Trust me, though. Losing is one of the best things you can do to improve at fighting games. Or you can always laugh it off and say you don't play these games. Thanks for watching, I am streaming on Twitch right now. I somehow got into the Tekken 8 beta, so we're going to be checking that out and absolutely eating shit in the rank ladder. While you're looking for the link in the description, why not subscribe to the channel or even give the patron a look? Any amount really helps me make these videos, and you can even get your name read out like these lovely people right here. 64 megahertz, almost nap time, Ben from Canada, Savantis de Leon, Daniel Wiederich, Dragonprox, Games.png, I am Naoto, Jackal Reeves, MP04, Enhoa, Ray W, Super, Forcon, Tom Tanks, Voltaic Charge, and Zandatsu.